The no-hitter is a concept that, for a decent stretch in the 2000s, was becoming less of a prized oddity like it had always been, and more of a yearly expectation. From 2000 to last year, there was an average of nearly three no-hitters per year, not to mention the five from last year's campaign alone. But today, I'd like to take the time to highlight one from the bunch specifically, and it may not be the one you're expecting. But before we can do anything about that, we have to talk about Mark Burley. I'm the Jolly Olive, and this is the Forgotten No-Hitter. Now, if you were growing up in the 2000s as a baseball fan, you probably know who Mark Burley is, but if you don't, all you really need to know is that he has over 200 career wins with a career ERA of 3.81 over 16 seasons. But we're not talking about Burley's entire career, we're talking about one game specifically, and if you know where I'm headed, then you know that this game is an all-time classic. On July 10th, 2009, Mark Burley twirled one of the most memorable perfect games in MLB history. Now, you may be thinking, well, isn't every perfect game memorable just on account of what it is? It differs from a no-hitter in that perfect games mean no runner reach base at all, whether it be by a walk, a hit by pitch, a drop third strike, or an error. Burley's game stands out for more than just being a perfect game. At this point in 2009, MLB fans had gone five years without seeing a perfect game. No, this perfect game was a little bit different because of the opponent and because of how it ended. The Tampa Bay Rays, who had the second highest OBP in the league at 343 at that point, couldn't stop Burley even once on this day. What you also probably remember is what happened with nobody out in the ninth, where Gabe Kapler, yes, that Gabe Kapler, stepped up to the plate and hit a bomb off Mark Burley, only to have Dwayne Wise run up the wall and make an incredible catch, a catch that hasn't even come close to being replicated since. Two outs later, Mark Burley had a perfect game, the first of his career and his second technical no-hitter. On this day, Burley entered an extremely exclusive class of pitchers with multiple no-hitters in perfect games, joining the likes of Nolan Ryan and Justin Verlander to name a few. So how in the world can this be considered a forgotten no-hitter as per the title of my video? That's the thing, it's not. Not by a long shot. Burley's perfect game is one of the most fondly remembered games of the 21st century, especially being that there's only been one perfect game since. So there's no way this game could truly be forgotten. The only thing that could be forgotten is anything that came before it. Burley's gem helped erase another fantastic performance that took place just 13 days before it, in the Bay of San Francisco. I think of the 2009 San Francisco Giants roster as a cave of big moments that hadn't happened yet. Travis Ishikawa, famously known for his series-winning walk-off home run in the 2014 National League Championship Series, was just getting his first regular reps as a starting first baseman in the league. This was also the first season Madison Bumgarner pitched a major league game. Buster Posey goes 2 for 17 in his first reps as a major leaguer. These players would obviously go on to be fantastic in their careers, but they also lined up with some great storylines that already existed at the time, like Tim Lincecum in his second year of his insane run as the San Francisco Giants ace. And Randy Johnson, yes, Randy Johnson, the San Francisco Giant, who was wrapping up the final year of his career. This Giants team had pretty high aspirations, being that they led the NL wildcard race for the majority of the season. This team had hopes to not only potentially snap a six-year playoff drought, but maybe even their 40-year World Series drought. I mean, who knows when these guys would ever get another chance at a ring, right? The time was now. All joking aside, the team finished with a respectable 88 wins and another third place finish, but poised themselves to break out in the coming years with their heaps of young talent. Even if you consider yourself to be an avid baseball fan, you may not recognize the name Jonathan Sanchez, and for valid reasoning. With a career ERA of 4.72 and a merry-go-round between the bullpen and rotation with several different teams over eight years, Sanchez's career was a roller coaster. Mostly plagued by control issues, Sanchez had success in some years, but his results were mostly inconsistent, and the 2009 season seemed to be no different. 
Sanchez was feeling better about his baseball career this particular week, however. After a three-week-long demotion to the bullpen due to his immense struggles and starts in the first half, he was given the nod against the division rival San Diego Padres. The Giants were feeling good about their season, being that they were nine games over 500, while the Padres were doing what they've been known for doing for the past 20 years, stewing in mediocrity at the halfway point of the season at a 35-51 and 51 record. Their lineup featured Kevin Kuzminoff, batting third and playing third, and Chase Headley, famously known for his fielding proficiency in... left field. Hmm. But fun facts and tidbits aside, Sanchez had not allowed a base runner in six innings. 18 up, 18 down, perfect. Just like Burley would be in 13 days. MLB fans have been without a perfect game since 2004, and now they're only nine outs away. And Sanchez probably knows that too. And he strikes out the side in the seventh. 21 up, 21 down. On to the eighth. Adrian Gonzalez is easily the Padres' best hitter, and he hits one deep to left, just a few feet short of the wall, one out in the eighth. After nearly losing everything, Sanchez is four outs away. And then, disaster. On the ground, Uribe off his chest, and it'll be a base runner. It'll be an error. The perfect game is gone. The no-hitter is still there, but Sanchez, despite being perfect, will not get a perfect game tonight. And that face is burned in my mind. But Sanchez pressed on, because what else is a pitcher supposed to do in a situation like this than pick up his team? And that's exactly what he did. He gets the next two outs in the eighth, including striking out the last batter, and on to the ninth he went with a no-hitter. He gets the first out via ground out. Padres outfielder Edgar Gonzalez gives one an absolute ride, but Aaron Rowan is there to meet the task, crashing into the wall to get the second out in the ninth. And finally, with a great play and the stars aligning, Jonathan Sanchez strikes out Everett Cabrera and secures the Giants' no-hitter. 8 to nothing, Giants, your final. Jonathan Sanchez was perfect, but will go home with a no-hitter instead. It all begs the question, are perfect games an anomaly because we allow them to be? Sanchez was perfect this night, but his teammates weren't. Sanchez recorded 28 outs, but will only be credited for 27 in the box score. Sanchez threw a perfect game, but the headlines will read that it was a no-hitter. Baseball can be a truly cruel sport in its artistry and unpredictability, but that's part of what makes it great in the first place. Sanchez twirled one of the finest looking gems in recent baseball history, the only scratch on said gem being something completely out of his control. But one scratch invited a pile of dust burying this game in the depths of mid-2000s footnotes as Burley threw the game of the year less than two weeks later. Is this a sad story, though? I don't think so. Sanchez set out to do something amazing and he finished the job, and he will forever be remembered because of it. And one person's greatness does not undermine another's. What I find ultimately more significant is the fact that Jonathan Sanchez is still pitching today. Pitching down in northern Mexico, not phased by the experiences of his past, and continuing to play the game that he loves.